think about it day and night. I feel like the king of the game. Cats and Chicks. You're listening to Viva ENT, a rock, pop, and soul. We are live in the studio. Uh, I am Devin, the extreme dude. Hey, extreme dudes! Why are you so extreme? Well, I'm about living uh, color and extreme at Showbox Market, and that's, that's pretty extreme. <laughs> and I'm here in the studio with the one and only Do Train. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. And the greatest producer of all time. Hey, it's Eric. And uh, not uh, with us today is Johnny, because he is busy at the shores, jamming out, as always. With the bad boys. With the Johnny and the bad boys. <laughs> and uh, we have a great show for you, uh, everyone. Uh, we're talking about the band. Not just any old band. The band. The band. Uh, in honor of uh, Robbie Robinson, uh, who's uh, left, left the... Uh, physical world but rest in peace but uh he still remains on uh the last waltz which yeah. highly recommend everyone go out and watch it's free with ads on tubi so and it's a great watch yeah there's tons of famous people even if you just listen to the audio it's just incredible performances you can find clips on youtube as well so absolutely well we are uh on the seventh day of show timber uh, I'm I'm trying to uh, do the, so. There's a, so there's a super size, uh, size me documentary about eating McDonald's every day. I'm trying to make a, a documentary about me going to a concert or working a show every day of the month of September. And if you can actually make that happen, that will be truly incredible. Well, on top of uh, trying to, uh, if see you can get the licensing rights <laughs> exactly. for all, all that music, my, I will doff my cap. To there you sir, go. That, that would be a feat never achieved by man before. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm like 128 concerts in to my uh, world record goal as well for the Guinness Book of World Records. So, yeah. and um, I'm making sure I'm taking selfies this time and and really documenting that I was there at fr- every fr- one of those shows. The Beach Boys was incredible last month. Yeah, the Beach Boys was incredible. That's uh, high those guys are le- <laughs> legends, and well, they still had the the good voices. Yeah, they, they do. They really had the good voices still. They, they've been playing since the like their 1963 for some of their songs. Six decades later, and they still wow. sound like the uh, the record. Yeah, fantastic, incredible. And John Bolton, our local drummer, yep, from uh, the Herding Cats, uh, was uh, brought the thunder. Yeah. He did bring the thunder, and they had some great um, graphics that they had made up for John Bolton, the bolt. Um, lightning <laughs> bolts coming yeah, down. lightning um, bolts and yeah. stuff. And not former U.N. ambassador John Bolton. No. No. <laughs> okay. Not him. <laughs> this it guy stands up when he drums. Yeah, this, this guy. And actually, uh, I don't know if you noticed in the footage, but near the end of the show, he tried to put on one of his Muppet hats, and it wouldn't stay on, so he flung it aside pretty quickly. But um, he's pretty silly, but he's he's really good. And, yeah, he had those uh, old Beach Boys on their toes, that's for sure. <laughs> he was also part of George Fest, which is coming back again in October. So uh, that's, that's going uh, to be a fun show. Yeah, he loves the Beatles. And uh, and he's a great match. For it's the, George Fest. That's the uh, festival in Georgetown in Seattle. It's actually going to be. Uh, it's about George George, George Harrison, Harrison Fest. Fest. Oh, okay. And that's going to be uh, <laughs> at the Triple Door. Uh, that's right. the same night at Guns and Roses. So I I don't know if I'm going to make it, but yeah, um, doesn't I've, look like it. They developed clone technology before then. <laughs> I'm going to deploy one of my clones there. So talk to Dolly the sheep about that. Well. 
We need a Dolly Parton clone too, but that's a there you go. Oh, and speaking of which, who's of in Guns and Roses these days? By the way, well, Slash, Slash, he's Slash back is, in. Yeah, and, okay. and I'm pretty sure Axel, Axel Rose, Rose is back yeah. in. Well, sure. Well, Axel's been the the one mainstay, but yeah. they've had so many lineup changes. There was like 20 years where it was Buckethead, and then uh, he was the guitar player. Then right. I guess Slash got back involved. Duff McKagan, the bass player and Seattle guy, is he back involved? back in the um, band, you know, I would, anything at all? I would think so, that? but yeah, that one I'm not sure of. But yeah, I did, that's right. He is a local guy. I do remember that now. And possibly, I've heard rumors of Alice in Chains opening up for them. Yeah, actually, that rumor is, I think, has been... Um, is that debunked? Yeah, I've been debunked. Um, they, they, it's not on their website. I Actually, a guy they talked to me about this. They would have this. put that on the ticket already, I feel. Yeah, and, and, and they're game. scheduled to be somewhere else, I think, maybe even that night. Yeah, the current lineup has Axl Rose, Slash, and Duff McKagan. Uh, as well as guitarist Richard Fortis and drummer Frank Furr, keyboardist Dizzy Reed and Melissa Reed. So no sign of Izzy Stradlin uh, back in the group, but uh, Duff McKagan, who was born in Seattle, back in the band. So that will be kind of a homecoming show for him. And I, ironically, Alice in Chains, as you mentioned, not opening up uh, for this date because they're over in Spokane. Uh, so... They won't be having a homecoming show, but uh, we'll see who uh, GNR has for their opener. Okay, well, uh, put the kibosh on that. Well, September, so many great shows. Uh, last uh, night. Last night was Tommy Two-Tone, Rick yes. Springfield. eight six seven five three zero nine, and the Hooters. Yeah, Jesse's Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ben Park. Rick Springfield, so that was really awesome. And then tomorrow, we're going to go see Kansas. Yep. And tonight I'm seeing 50 Cent, uh, and happy birthday to my wife, uh, Lita. That's right. Happy birthday, Lita. Yeah, uh, that's our uh, her birthday show. We're going to the Climate Pledge and uh, with Busta Rhymes. That's going to be nice. awesome. Yeah. Started off the month with Chicago at the fair. Yep. And yep. then uh, Goo Goo Dolls at the winery. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, coming up. I'm seeing Action Buddy on the September 9th it's, uh, with my friend's band. Uh, that is, I think, George Fest, Georgetown or Columbia City Fest or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the 10th, John Oliver is at Paramount Theater. I'll be there that night. Very cool. 11th, uh, Lionel, Lionel Richie, Richie Earth, Wind, and Fire. Earth, Wind, and Fire on the 11th. Yep. Uh, 14th, Beyonce. And then 15th, Steve Miller. Steve Miller Band. And then 16th, Counting Crows. <laughs> and then 17th, Genji Fever at the Madame Luz. Uh, mm-hmm. Thank you, Jeff Lombardi. He's been on the show before. Got me free tickets to that. Uh, 20th is Coldplay. Coldplay. 22nd is uh, Arctic Monkeys. And then to finish off the month, uh, is Sting coming? Yeah, Sting is coming with Joe Sumner uh, the 27th of September at Climate Pledge. So It is a full month. Yeah. Uh, I hope, and the new iPhone's coming out this month as well, the 15 Pro Max. So uh, we're going to find out details on September 12th uh, what, what Apple's going to bring to the table. Yeah, the specs and everything. Because the 14 Pro Max has changed my life. I feel it's. I mean, every every, <laughs> every of these all these devices have taken you to a new 4K level. Yeah, especially uh, Living Color. Uh, that footage at the show box. When I'm in like kind of a close proximity. It, it just looks really crisp. Yeah, but back in the day, Martin Scorsese had the same idea of we got to document these bands. Yeah, and so that's why he made the movie The Last Waltz. Yeah, he's like, we got to document this band. This yeah, band, this particular band, <laughs> yeah, and uh, they bring on at the end. They got uh, that movie stars Bob Dylan, Neil Young, Joan Baez, Ringo Starr, who we saw, yep. Emmy Lou Harris, uh, uh, oh Neil Diamond, Muddy yeah. Waters. I saw Buddy Guy, Buddy played, Guy, played some Muddy Waters songs. So. Yeah. Anyway, um, that was a great show. Great, great show. With, and you know, obviously. Uh, having Martin Scorsese document it all and and put it all together, just uh, uh, absolutely awesome. And uh, Rod Stewart, when he played with Cheap Trick, uh, played a, a, the Ro- a Robbie Robinson song. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the, if we, you know, we're going to talk about that for a sec. Then, uh, yeah, we saw. I'm wearing the actual Rod Stewart shirt uh, from that show, and uh, it, they ended up uh, throwing the song "Broken Arrow" by Robbie Robertson into the set list, sort of after the fact, after he passed, uh, because he was one of the people who had actually done 
like an actual official album version uh, cover recording of it um, on one of his Rod Stewart albums. Um, and the funny thing is, is that I've I've seen two different bands now do that song, um, but never seen Robbie himself do it. Um, of course, uh, the Grateful Dead used to play that song for a few years, and uh, bass player Phil Lesh would would sing. And so I saw that one down in Eugene in '93. Uh, but great tribute by Rod to uh, Robbie Robertson playing Broken Arrow during the show here in Seattle. Definitely. And uh, I've been seeing a bunch of great tribute bands lately, uh, like Fat Saturn, and uh, there's been um, some other tributes to the, these artists that's, sure. that have been yeah. coming out. Yeah, that's as it should be. <laughs> so starting, uh, the, the the band is a Canadian-American rock band. They, they, they started off in Toronto, Ontario, 1967. The year I was born. <laughs> wow. With Garts Hudson on the keyboards and... Rick Danko on the, the guitar and vocals, and uh, Richard Manuel and Robbie Robertson you know, playing guitar, songwriting, and the vocals. And American uh, Le- on Helm was on the drums as well. They, they all uh, collaborated. Yeah. And they, uh, some of their music influenced musicians like George Harrison, Alton John, Grateful Dead, Eric Clapton, Wilco. Yeah. Well, so they've left their impact. Yeah, and they were the backup true. band for Bob Dylan. Yeah. Which, who we saw last year. Propelled that, them yeah. to another level of success and stardom at that particular time when that sort of got put together. Yeah, yeah 1966 concert tour was uh, uh, <laughs> featuring the band, and it was Dylan's first with an electric band. So, you know, they were there when people were yelling out, Judas! <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> To just, Bob Dylan, because he was using electric guitars I just suddenly that instead of his funny, acoustic guitars. Judas comment <laughs> some some hardcore <laughs> folk people you don't yeah, want to make yeah. that i guess <laughs> well there, there's a funny um there's I, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie i'm not there which is the movie about the set, sort of seven different depictions of um uh, bob dylan during different sort of periods of his life Phoenix. So. Yeah, and yeah, I'm aware of it, but I haven't seen it. Heath Ledger and and um, Richard Gere and Kate Blanchett even does one, and and that's what I was going to say. It, she plays the Bob Dylan during the era when they went to Newport and did the uh, yeah. electric, <laughs> and uh, people yelling and screaming stuff at her on stage. Um, yeah, but uh, a great uh, you know a historic moment for him, of course. And Joaquin Phoenix, it wasn't about that that time at, uh, he went on Dave Letterman and it was acting all weird. That <laughs> might have been, yeah. <laughs> so, and I mean, uh, that you could pretty much say uh, any day of his life, <laughs> <laughs> whether he was on Letterman or not, he was acting weird. Have you seen the, the movie Her with Joaquin Phoenix? I have it. Okay, well, it's about him and his device, and that came out 2014. But it's it was prolific. Like I feel like. I, I might go to these concerts alone, but if I'm with my device, I'm never alone. It's like this. this it's weird. Well, it's, Big it, Brother the, is watching. Well, that too. George but, Orwell said. But the AI is getting. Uh, oh, of course. Just changing the world the by the day. Robots and the AI and all the stuff. I was we're working a Penny Arcade Expo at the uh, convention center, and I'm seeing all the state of the art PCs and Alienware, and they're, they're coming. They're publishing a lot out there. Of, so, but um, they didn't have any of that back. When Martin Scorsese was making this, he did it all on film. <laughs> Old school film. Yeah, 1976. Uh, not nobody. too much uh, digital video knows about going around. Around. Little to none, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember what I was doing that year. <laughs> but I wasn't watching that movie yet, unfortunately. 76? What, oh, what were you doing? Nine years old. Yeah, I was in Indiana. I remember seeing the 4th of July fireworks, the bicentennial fireworks down in, at the park in Evansville, Indiana when I was nine. Yeah, but yeah, that I mean, seventy six. What a you know, what an interesting time that was. Anyway, because you know, is there sort of ushering out a little bit of the rock era? You know, of course, a lot of disco and stuff is starting to filter in uh, to the bigger picture. Um, so you know, almost maybe a good time to do the last waltz and you know, say their goodbyes and uh, all that. And then, uh, yeah, like Bob Marley was in the scene around then. They're coming out with a Bob Marley movie uh, in 2024, One Love. Oh, I hadn't heard that. Well, that's interesting. I'd, I'll probably see that then. Oh, yeah. we're definitely going to see that in theaters. That's going to yeah. be 
uh, I saw Oppenheimer. How was that? Uh, so great, I fell asleep and woke up to a nuclear bomb. But <laughs> have you seen Oppenheimer yet? Or I did see it. Yeah, I what, enjoyed it. What'd you think? It was, I thought it was great. Yeah, yeah, definitely very, very compelling. I need to watch it again for yeah. real. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> And Barbie, I have not seen, but I heard that's really good. Oh, and the funny thing about Barbie, too, was that, <laughs> as you had mentioned, uh, the Beach Boys, when we went and saw them, at the very, the very, very last song of the show was Fun, Fun, Fun. And uh, they announced, uh, pre announced the song to everybody. Um, but he also added the note that even though this song had come out in like 1963 or something, that uh, it, it's in the new Barbie movie, he said, and so we're still culturally, culturally pertinent today. <laughs> so, very funny that, you know, those old guys still kicking around in soundtracks and stuff. <laughs> and le- like the, the last waltz, Bo- I think Bob Dylan's still on tour. He's on the Never Ending Tour. Yeah, well, he is on the Never Ending Tour, yeah, until, you know, God rest so, his soul, he passes. How many people are left from the band now? Uh, well, oh, that's a good question. I didn't actually look up uh, to see if any of them had passed. I don't know that any of them have what, passed. What shape are they in? <laughs> Do you know the song "The Shape I'm In"? The shape Eric, I'm or? in. I, you know, I'm not familiar with that one. I, I, when I think of the band, I typically think of the weight. Yes. yes. As I, uh, um, although th- that wasn't even their biggest hit, but it, I think it's the one that stood the test of time that people cite most often or sing along with when they hear it come on the radio. And uh, for those that aren't familiar, let's hear a little bit of The Weight by the band. And part of the reason why it became so popular is because of uh, the movie um, uh, with Peter Fonda. I'm going to block it out. I just need some place where I can leave. Easy Rider. Where a man might find a bed. He just grinned and shook my hand. No was all he said. Take a load off, Fanny. Take a load for free. Take a load off, Fanny. And you put the load right on. Now, this song was released in 1968, and it was the single from the debut album, Music from Big Pink, which I think is still considered their masterpiece and uh, their most popular record. And Roger Walters called that album the second most influential record in the history of rock and roll. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. And he was pretty influential himself, so that's a pretty high praise. The song is about a visitor's experience in a town mentioned in the lyrics. uh, In the first line is Nazareth. Nazareth. Yeah. Listed as number 41 on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Songs of All Time. But yeah, I'm, I'm smelling some bibli- biblical references in there for sure, like Luke. Interesting that it was used in Easy Rider, but not licensed for the soundtrack album. So they, uh, the producers commissioned the band Smith to record a cover of the song for the soundtrack. <laughs> and similarly, they had some issues with Woodstock. I uh, read uh, that they were wanting to include some of their stuff in the Woodstock movie, but there were some, you know, uh, legal issues. There's always a Bright Adams or an Eagles out there that gets picky, that 
my music is above all others and no other else no one else can play <laughs> except for me and the record label although maybe i should take 10 seconds and just say thank you very kindly to the people the youtube sheriffs and the people at youtube for allowing me to get the rest of my channel back i do truly honestly appreciate that so much because i didn't want to have to recreate 12 years of work in the next two years so thank you anyway I just uh, wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, I didn't realize you're Indiana Jones. Like he, uh, you, you just hop into a fridge when there's a nuclear bomb and survive it. That you, were, he was offline for a couple of days. I was really worried about yeah, that. But yeah. it was it was actually deleted. But it uh, it's never truly deleted because it's always there on servers and stuff. And so I was able to at least convince them to give me that stuff back. So and no, nice. we're, we're both golden right now. No strikes on either channel. Yeah. We're we're uh, yeah. And full full bore back to good so that's good well you know this song was written by the late great robbie robertson from yeah. the band and so uh since we mentioned it i think we should hear the uh smith version of the way okay yeah this one from the uh, easy rider soundtrack I don't think I've ever heard this version before. It's good, though. You know? Yeah. I, I don't think they were reinventing the wheel at all with this arrangement, but uh, yeah. yeah, it works. Yeah, and, and, and the funny thing is that I'll bet you a lot of people, like probably me, heard that version and thought it was the band, like maybe an alternate right. you know, recording or something. I think it wasn't. Well, of course, as we've mentioned, the band, uh, uh, you know, very famous and really got the spotlight shined on them by being the backing band for Bob Dylan on tour. But they also appeared on some of his recordings, including this one, Like a Rolling Stone. And the Rolling Stones listen to that song. It's like, we're going to call them, we're going to call ourselves the Rolling Stones. Yeah, and the <laughs> Rolling Stones actually ended up covering that song eventually, <laughs> which just had to happen, right? <laughs> of course. How could you not? And the, the origins of the band, they were called the Hawks. Yeah. Earlier, yeah. Before they, yeah. Or uh, they were yeah, backing rockability singer Ronnie Hawkins. Yeah. Who's in Last Waltz as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Awesome. 
Well, yeah. taking a look at some of their other significant hits, uh, the night they drove old Dixie down and up on Cripple Creek, a double uh, A-side single, went to uh, number 10 in Canada uh, back in 1969 and number 25 in the U.S. Let's hear a little bit of their version of the night they drove old Dixie down. And this is from their second record, self-titled second record, and featured Levon Helm on the vocals. And another one written by Robbie Robertson. And, of course, this uh, achieved greater success when Joan Baez covered it and took it all the way to number three in 1971. Oh, can we hear her version? Yeah, Yeah, because it's it's a lot different. I mean, it's kind of the the same song, but her female vocals. No, Joan Baez, yeah, what a legend. Good. All right, let's hear a little bit of Joan Baez's version of the night they drove old Dixie down. Virgil Kane is my name, and I drove on the Danville train. Till so much cavalry came and tore up the tracks again. In the winter of 65, we were hungry. I took the train to Richmond that fell. It was a time I remember oh so well. Robbie Robertson definitely had a gift for writing songs that uh, not only sounded, you know, folky and traditional, but just sound like they've been around forever. Yeah. You know, and, and to think that these, you know, were written in the late 60s or, you know, sometimes even in the 70s, but just seem like th- these must have existed since the dawn of time. The, the 1860s or 70s? Right, right. 18. Exactly. Oh. They well, have that feel like it, it would have been written in the 1860s. Right. And I don't care if the money's no good. Just take what you need and leave. And then the if it was written today, it'd be the night the old the Pixies it drove the, the, the you know because you know the Pixies are playing tomorrow at Pilot Pledge. Oh, I didn't. Uh, oh, with Modest Mouse. Yes. Yes, that's right. But we're seeing Kansas, so we yeah. can't. Uh, just there's just too many shows. I need. But I uh, forgotten about that one. Uh, you any favorite song of? The band, Darren? Oh, um, the other one that you mentioned um, off of that album. Um, remember? Uh, the uh, Up on Cripple Creek. Up on Creek. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, gotta love that one. And um, both of those songs. Um, I, I, it's funny. I think Grateful Dead at different times played the three big ones. Up on Cripple Creek, Night They Drove Old Dixie Down, and The Wait. Um, a lot of times the wait was an encore, I believe, for uh, the dead um, when they were doing that one. Here's a little bit of Up on Cripple Creek. When I get off of this mountain, you know where I want to go. Straight down the Mississippi River to the Gulf of Mexico. The Lake Charles, Louisiana, Little Bessie. 
sexy girl I once knew And she told me just to come on by If there's anything that she could do Up on Cripple Creek She sends me if I spring a leaf She mends me I don't have to speak And she defends me A drunkard stream if I ever did Another one written by Robbie Robertson with drummer Levon Helm singing the lead vocal. Wow. They seem to have a winning formula when they Great have, combination. Yeah, Robbie, yeah, write the song and uh, Levon do the vocal. Yes. And then in 1973, they, they made the covers album Moondog Mat- Manatee, and uh, they played at the legendary summer jam at Watkins Glen, uh, New York, which also featured Grateful Dead and the Allman Brothers. Wow. So that w- would have been quite the event. I'd love to see, go back in time and see that show. Yeah, I just need a, t- a time traveling smartwatch at this <laughs> point, and uh, we're just need, need do all every tour ever was, and make sure. Well, we're... don't tell anybody, but I actually have a functioning time machine. I just don't really tell too many people, but sh- keep that a secret. <laughs> okay. Another hit for the band in 1972 was "Don't Do It" from their Rock of Ages album, and this is the live version featured on the last waltz. Don't you break my heart A please Don't play Don't you break my heart I sacrifice to make you happy Give nothing for myself And you want to leave me For the love of someone else My pride is all gone A widow Don't do it. I A little context for the last waltz. It was uh, held on Thanksgiving Day of 1976 at the Winterland Ballroom in San Francisco, California. Yeah, uh, which uh, launched uh, a lot of careers. Bill, Bill Graham and uh, the Winterland um, in San Francisco and then, of course, Winterland East in New York. Um, yeah, launched a lot of careers, including Grateful Dead and, you know, Jefferson Airplane and uh, um, San Francisco psychic, uh, Psychedelic. 60s, you know, sort of band. And other uh, artists featured in the movie include jo- uh, Joni Mitchell, Dr. John, Van Morrison, mm-hmm. Ronnie Wood, Bobby Charles, and Paul Butterfield. So, uh, great, uh, great list of people. Uh, it would it be okay if we uh, divert from the, the band's ba- uh, core music to another song in the concert, Manish Boy, uh, Muddy Waters cover? Sure. Let's yeah. let's hear a little bit of uh, Bob do- Bob Dylan doing a, a night like this with the band backing him up first, and then we'll find that one. Fantastic. To talk about 
and much to reminisce. It sure is right on a night like this. On a night like this, I'm so glad you're here to stay. Hold on to me, pretty miss, and say you'll never go in way too straight. Run your fingers down my spine and bring me a touch of bliss. It sure feels right on a night like this. On a night like this, I can't get any sleep. I know about those nights. Yeah, Bob Dylan from the <laughs> Planet Waves record on a night like this, uh, featuring the band. And you mentioned uh, the band with Muddy Waters, uh, who I guess was a special guest for that concert. Yeah. Uh, doing Manish Boy. So let's hear a little bit of that. And so, definitely the blueprint for about a million different blues songs <laughs> following this pattern, this uh, this form. Yeah, we went and saw Buddy Guy recently. And, uh-huh. You know, probably two thirds of the songs had that sort of general vamp layout. kind of feel. Yeah. It's all good. That's the way blues is. And uh, Eric Gates opened up for him. Uh, Eric Gales. Gales. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, he was a good. Yeah, 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 he was good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so. yeah. He did a great Jimi Hendrix tribute. I need to go uh, spend some time and post some openers. I, I just keep posting the main acts. There's no time to go back and post these openers. That's right. Let alone all these small bands. Poor guys get lost in the shuffle. It's yeah. It's uh, it's all too much, as the Beatles say. <laughs> well, it's been almost a month since Rob, we lost Robbie Robinson, uh, August uh, 9th of, of this year. Uh, he was age 80. Uh, he was battling battling long illnesses, but. Uh, with Robert's uh, passing, Garth Hudson is the last living original member of the group. Oh, okay. So we're down to one now. Yeah, okay. So then I was, I was wrong. So yeah, we got to try to get Garth Hudson on the show. I, I got to reach out to him. That'd be pretty epic if you could get Garth. Well, on the show. We, we Johnny has connections. Oh so no, I, we, I, we'll, I know he does. <laughs> we'll we'll great. make him an offer he can't refuse. There you go. Um, stay at the casino in Ocean Shores. 
Martin Scorsese, famous director, also made uh, like a bunch of great movies, like Casino. And oh, he's made so many great movies. It's he, <laughs> yeah, he he's a legend and and mainly known for the the gangster movies that he sure. made. So to do a concert film, yeah. uh, you know, kind of a little bit out of character for him, yeah, really a departure for him a little bit. It just it goes to show just how much he loved the music of Bob Dylan and how much he loved the music of the band. Yeah, I think uh, Johnny's met Martin Scorsese because he consulted them for Casino because he was there. <laughs> That's cool. So, Very cool. Um, we'll have to next, next time he's all back on. We'll have to ask his. Martin Scorsese stories. Right, right. Well, um, and good. always Martin Scorsese has great music in his, his soundtracks in his films. Like, oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Casino. So if we survive show timber, there's Rocktober's around the corner. We're seeing ZZ Top, Muckleshoot Casino. You're going to see Pink. Pink. We're going to see the... But not Big Pink. <laughs> that's the big pink. That's, right? that's some this, house. This, this small pink. This normal. This... Oh, there was a band called the Big Pink. Oh, right, yeah, right. They took their name from yeah. the album by the band, right. although they had a completely different sound than sure, the band. Sure. <laughs> and then uh, the day after ZZ Top, the Postal Service and Def Cab for Cutie. Oh, that's right. And October 8th, Peter Gabriel. Uh, October 14th, so Guns N' Roses. 15th, Robert DeLong at Neptune. Uh, so the 17th is Pink. The October twenty eighth, I'm seeing the the guys from Workaholics. They're doing a, a podcast at McCall Hall. So it's my sister's birthday. That's right. Your, your birthday is in October too. That's yep. I think that's uh, around Pink. Yeah, the day before Pink. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Big Pink was, as you mentioned, a house, and the band uh, it took it took that name for music from Big Pink, which was their their debut studio album, but it did not feature. Uh, on the cover, instead, it featured a, a painting of uh, uh, different people playing guitars and an elephant and stuff. So the uh, the cover uh, for music from Big Pink didn't really reflect the title music from Big Pink. But <laughs> when they released an album called Jericho later, the cover they really could have swapped them because Jericho does feature a painting of Big Pink. And they had a hit from it called Remedy. So here's a little bit of Remedy from Jericho after the band reunited in the early 80s. Here's Remedy. From their eighth studio album, Jericho, and coming 17 years after their quote-unquote farewell concert released in 1993. <laughs> and in 1994, the band performed at Woodstock 94. So, uh, And then the, the band was also put into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, that year. And then in uh, 1996, uh, they released two more bands after Jericho. Uh, High on the Hog in 96 and Jubilation wow. in 98. And uh, it features some uh, guest appearances of Eric Clapton and John Haight. And then uh, Helm was uh, diagnosed with throat cancer in 1998 and was unable to sing for several years, but eventually regained the use of his voice. And then in 2002, Robertson brought all the former members uh, together in... Uh, and, and give him a, 
the the um so the the band well in 2008 received a grammy award uh, but there's no reunion of the formal members but in honor of the event helm uh held a midnight ramble in woodstock and he continued to perform and release several albums but on uh, april 17th 2012 it was announced on his website he was on the final stages of uh, of life and he yeah. passed away two days later so very sad yeah can't we're in the we're in the future now That's... right i was just looking up uh some information um because uh when they um were doing some different iterations of the band they included some pretty famous people um in the band such as jack cassidy and jorma kaukinen who were you know, famous for being in like hot tuna and jefferson airplane and stuff and then Billy Preston, of course, the, the sometimes fifth Beatle from the Rooftop concert and, and uh, the last album uh, were, uh, was also a member of the band at some point. So some interesting um, celebrities uh, in the band there at different points. And uh, how much time do we have, Eric? Are we, uh, I feel like we're running out. Yeah, we got about five minutes. Well, uh, some other uh, achievements by them. Uh, they were in 2014 inducted into Canada's Walk of Fame. Uh, Rolling Stone ranks them 50th on, of the list of 100 greatest artists of all time. And we already mentioned the weight, the 41st song of the greatest 500 songs of all time. Yeah. That's, yeah 2008, that's the group that's received it. the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. And they're also inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame and the Rock and Roll Music Hall of Fame. So they, uh, they have quite the, uh, the lives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, those guys, yeah. Trying to find, uh, oh, another song on the list here that I had seen, um, was when I paint my masterpiece, um, a great band slash Bob Dylan tune, um, that, uh, the Grateful Dead uh, once again, um, covered a lot during concerts, uh, near the end of their, uh, run before jerry died um uh, well what? speaking of bob dylan you know the the bob dylan with the band put out a live record called before the flood uh that was a, a double album in 1974 and featured many songs by bob dylan but also uh some of the hits by the band including up on cripple creek mm -hmm. And the night they, they drove old Dixie down, stage fried, and more. I thought it'd be fun to take a little bit of a listen to Don't Think Twice, It's All Right, yeah. uh, recorded at the L.A. Forum in Inglewood, California, back in 1974 and featuring the band. One of Bob, Bob Dylan's all-time classics here. Yeah. Crowd goes down. Well, it ain't no use to sit and wonder why they If you don't know by now But it ain't no use to sit and wonder why they it don't matter anyhow When your rooster crows At the break of dawn Look out your window And I'll be gone You're the reason I'm a traveling home But don't think twice It's all right This album went platinum Which is a rare thing for a, a live record But, uh, you know, when it's Bob Dylan teaming up with the band You got that super group kind of dynamic It's not that big of a surprise I'm on the dark side of the road Still I wish there was something you would do or say To try and make me change my mind and stay But we never did too much talking anyway so don't think twice, it's all right. Good uh, philosophy in life to live. Yeah. Calling out my name, babe. 
Well, guys, we are running out of time. Anything else you want to plug before we wrap up the show for today? I'd like to go out. Uh, well, the ending song to be like "I Shall Be Released," the uh, Bob Dylan uh, last waltz song um, that they played. That was that's a really good version. Yeah. Thanks again for coming on the show, Darren. Of course. Thanks for having me on. Uh, as always, guys, it was fun. I appreciate it. And uh, I hope everyone's going to have a great show, Timber. <laughs> as, we're all, as, our, as we are already having. Yeah. And uh, uh, tune in next week. Yeah. Viva ENT, Rock, Pop, and Soul. Oh, we got, I forgot to mention the Facebook group. Oh. Uh, yes. Yeah. Viva ENT, Rock, Pop, and Soul on uh, Facebook. Come and join the group and join the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. need more members to spark lively conversations. And uh, check out Devin Chrysler Studios. That's where you'll find my 5,500 videos of local bands and. My <laughs> recently resurrected channel of At Do Train. Uh, your album's coming out this month? Fingers crossed. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll stay tuned on that. Yeah, batterseetheband.bandcamp.com. Keep us uh, posted. To check out the debut album from us. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, keep on rocking, everyone. All right. Yeah, we yeah. are going out with the band from The Last Waltz. I shall be released.